all right let's let's get started so well thank you so much everyone for taking out time and uh, attending this webinar session today my name is vivek kadam uh, i look after the sales at i2e consulting and i also act as the account manager for most of our clients i've been here for uh, eight years now and overall i've got 12 to 13 years of experience in sales and customer success so yeah the agenda is i'll introduce you to our speakers i'll tell you about the agenda that we have uh, then we will introduce uh, our organization i2e consulting we will introduce our partner planisware and then walid will be taking us uh, through planisware orchestra the tool there's also a short demo we also have a case study uh, where we will talk about the implementation of planisware orchestra that was done for one of our customers and then finally we'll have question and answers all right let's get started then uh, let me introduce you to our speakers we have uh, mr walid lataif he is from planisware he is the pre sales specialist for planisware orchestra he has uh, a huge experience when it comes to planisware uh, orchestra and ppm overall we also have mr himanshu arora he is the practice lead at i2e consulting and he has helped a lot of our customers in setting up their ppm practice again a lot of experience in in the ppm domain be it uh, microsoft project online or planisware orchestra uh, for all the planisware needs all the ppm needs of our customers himanshu is our go to guy and so is walid from the planisware side let me introduce you to our organization i2e consulting uh, walid if you can move the slides yeah so i2e consulting we are a software services providing company we've been in the business since 2008 and uh, we have offices in the us and in india we also now have satellite offices in uk and canada we've been working with the pharma domain for a very long time now as you can see we have some really big names uh, on our list pfizer merck novartis lupin etc we are premium partners of planisware uh, and the exclusive partner of planisware for planisware orchestra in india we are also partners with data iq Uh, other partnerships involve microsoft microsoft gold partnership aws snowflake and domo our major offerings they revolve around project and portfolio management where we do a lot of work in planisware enterprise and planisware orchestra then we have digital transformation where we do a lot of work in microsoft uh, domain be it power platform be it sharepoint uh, you know document management systems quality management systems we do it all data engineering and analytics is where we help our customers in creation of data lakes a lot of uh, etl uh, small and large projects uh, we take care of we help our customers in data visualization as well where we do a lot of work in in reporting uh, we have experience in all the tools that are out there be it uh, power bi you know spotfire tableau we've also built custom dashboards for our uh, customers and then lastly cloud enablement we help our customers in the cloud uh, adoption journey and uh, yeah be it aws or azure we have experience in both so that's about i2e consulting uh, moving on we have can you go to the next slide yeah we have planisware our premium partner and uh, for planisware i would want walid to take over and give you more information so thank you walid over to you so uh, actually we are planisware uh, we are project and portfolio management software editor and provider we are leader actually in the ppm uh, market and uh, we are located all over the world uh, through uh, our um, 14 actually of offices so uh, we 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 have actually multiple uh, users worldwide and uh, we are still uh, kind of like the only because this is very uh, rare in the ppm industry privately owned uh, software uh, company so uh, here we really actually invest in the r&d of our features and uh, we try to really be always uh, on the on the on the edge the innovation in the ppm market 
we are also recognized as market leaders, uh, either uh, from the Forester or Infotech or uh, also from the latest uh, Gartner, uh, actually uh, Magic Grant. So we are re recognized as leader of leader on those different referentials. Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit about Planesphere Orchestra. So uh, Planesphere has actually uh, two uh, different products, uh, both are in the PK market, but today we are going to focus on Planesphere Orchestra. So uh, Planesphere Orchestra is uh, uh, actually very flexible uh, PPM tool uh, that is very oriented on the user adoption. So it's a very user friendly tool uh, that will help actually your team to gain in efficiency, meaning uh, that you will be able to uh, improve your project governance, uh, having this visibility to be able to uh, accelerate reporting, being able also to have some commitments your deadlines with your uh, customers with your sponsors etc our tool actually also accelerates your performance meaning that uh, you will have a, a whole uh, organization culture where you will be able to share the best practice the lessons learned uh, from your uh, ppm uh, either um, project or portfolio management but also you will be able to <clears throat> optimize the use of the of your resources thanks actually to some capacity planning scenarios simulations but also uh, a whole process and workflow that can be implemented about your resource management finally uh, our tool actually has a lot of added value meaning that uh, you will be able to have a single source of truth uh, you won't be able uh, to uh, have any um, kind of like uh, disruption between multiple sources you know like sometimes you put your data on an excel file on a powerpoint presentation um multiple versions of those different documents and then you don't know exactly what is the the right and what is the truth so here having one single uh, source of truth which is place for orchestra will help you to align your projects with your strategic objectives all right so our tool uh, actually cover the whole uh project and portfolio scope, meaning uh, that uh, from a portfolio perspective, and this is actually like uh, the, the highest level of the strategy of your organization's projects, the tool will help you actually to coordinate and to have uh, as many levels and sub-levels of portfolios and sub-portfolios. You'll be able to have a clear strategy but also you will be able to consolidate your project by business value within those different support portfolios and programs. And uh, the most important thing is that you will be able to arbitrate about any financial or uh, resource capacity constraints. So you will be able to decide if you can, for example, select the project, if you can approve it, if you can freeze it, etc. You will have all the main important and relevant information to take those decisions. Then going more in depth, actually, uh, here we get into the project management exercise. So when your project is approved, of course, uh, you are going to uh, execute those projects. Before getting those approved, we probably will have to build a draft project with all the different plans. You might have also different scenarios of projects. So you will only select one that will be then uh, get into implementation and into execution. So uh, about the project management exercise here, we cover, of course, also all the different knowledge areas. Uh, either if we go, uh, for example, with the PMI referentials, we cover from the governance of the project using the staging gate, uh, having also this visibility and the work plan management using the Gantt and the planning, the schedule of the project. Getting into uh, work management, this is the, 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 the other Part of it, which is more uh, actually, it's very very uh, small because you are going to manage day to day activities. This is different from what you manage on a schedule or on a Gantt, which basically would be tasks that would last at least for several days. We have also, of course, the ability to manage all the different cost and load uh, data, meaning all the different resources that, that you might estimate, or the cost items that you might estimate. Uh, at the, all the different levels of your project, either as tasks, group of tasks, projects, etc., and being able also to get that approved and then monitor it and control 
uh, across the whole project life cycle. And finally, and of course, the most important is about being able to monitor the progress of your project, uh, being able to build uh, strong actually KPIs and metrics that you have then to share with your other stakeholders. So here also we have different ways of reporting either dashboards, static reports like PDF and PowerPoints, or even we have the ability to push the data into a, uh, into a BI tool and being able to have actually uh, your own customized report that you will just build by yourself and with that will be no limited. Actually, there is no limits, of course, of using Power BI or Tableau or any other BI tool. All right. So the third actually uh, uh, level, let's say, of uh, our expertise is also about work and board management. As I said a little bit earlier on project manager management, you are going more to focus on uh, tasks, uh, group of tasks, work packages, which as I said, usually they, they last for several days or several weeks. Uh, for work management, it's more actually uh, the, the granularity is, is really, really very small because here you are going to break down a task into multiple actions. Those could be action plans, we, those could be activity plans or uh, any mitigation plans, for example, etc. So you will be able to assign those to your resource team and you will be able then to track the progress of those. And of course, here we have a very optimized way to do that. That will help actually all the project manager to keep control on their boards and, and the work in progress. All right, so let's move here into uh, some... Uh, actually animation here that uh, that covers the entire life cycle of projects and that explains more in depth how actually Planisware can help your organization. So basically here, I'm just going to start with what we call an ADA. So basically this ADA could be a project demand, a request, an intake, an initiative, a proposal, uh, actually an ADA that, uh, that was uh, created by your end user, okay? And that you will be able to submit for approval. So this idea is of course going to be added into a, a whole pipeline of other ideas. So you will be able to compare it based on multiple criteria, like for example, a strategic alignment score, but also other attributes, like for example, implementation hypothesis, the requested cost, the requested load, which resources do we need uh, for what, what, you know, what's the timeline, what's the start date, what's the end date, what's the whole duration if we do implement this AD uh, and we make this as a project, etc. Et so we're going to do a really objectively comparison of those different ideas to be able to really select the most relevant one to our company and to our organization. Once your idea was actually assessed and selected, you will be able to create a project. So here you will get more in depth in your analysis, meaning that you will be able to build the WS, a business case, uh, a very strong uh, schedule that you can at least initiate, etc. Your project is going to be part, of course, of a portfolio or program. And within those programs are portfolios, there are already some projects that are either running or new projects, just projects that you have created. So you will be able so to uh, arbitrate and to select the best projects among all those different projects within your portfolio that were not yet approved and select the right one. So your project is going to be added, of course, within the portfolio and you will be able to assess it regarding the other projects. So here, once again, based on multiple criteria, it could be about uh, financial indicators, for example, return on investment, net present value, requested costs, expected revenues, et cetera, et cetera. Also on non-financial uh, benefits, like for example, strategic alignment score, risk impact, and others. So here, once again, we have a lot of uh, possibilities. It's basically what we call the what if scenario that we can do here where we say, all right, uh, let's see if uh, we start this project maybe a little bit later, or uh, if we try to request more founding on this period, et cetera. So we are going to try 
to find the best balance between the requested cost and also load regarding capacity, regarding the founding that we have on our portfolio and regarding also the timelines and the constraints of our portfolio. So here we will be able to do a lot of scenarios and simulations where we can actually shift the projects and see what's the impact on the overall program and portfolio. Once we have find the best balance and uh, the best actually uh, location for our project, either for cost load, either for also the timeline, we will be able to approve it. All right, so our project is now approved. It means that we can start working on this. So it's no more on draft mode. It's going to be a real project. So we need to communicate that, of course, to the project team. Project manager is aware if there is any change regarding the cost or the start date or anything like that. And he can actually start the project execution. So now we move into the project management exercise where actually here we have a lot of methodologies that we can use, either waterfall, this is a sequential uh, methodology where we have kind of like some uh, links between the different tasks, some dependencies. We have also the agile uh, methodology, it's uh, different. We don't really have here uh, links. It's basically about being able to uh, get an amount of work done on into a time boxed event uh, and uh, we do this on an incremental uh, perspective. So basically this is used in the IT uh, projects. So I will uh, also explain that a little bit later. And finally, we have what we call the Wagile, but it's basically hybrid. So waterfall plus agile would be hybrid actually methodology. So we have also the ability to implement such a methodology. And finally, the staging gate methodology it's uh, about uh, governance so you will be able to check uh, uh, checklist of deliverables during your execution for each phase and get those deliverables reviewed during the gate and if you have passed your gate successfully you will be able to move into the next one so based on all those different methodologies you will always have of course access to all the different modules of the project management regarding uh, either boards, Gantt, but also the different logs, risk logs, issue logs, um, change request logs, et cetera, et cetera. So this is about executing your project. And of course, here it's also about monitoring and control. So it means that you will be able to uh, keep an eye on your performance regarding actually your cost consumption, your load consumption, if you are on track or off track regarding your, your timeline, et cetera. So you will always keep a track. You have, we have a lot of KPIs and metrics that you will be able actually to, uh, to report on. So all those different uh, reports will be available within the tool, but also, as I said, externally. So you can also have a connector to, for example, a BI tool and get those reports directly available there. Of course, our tool is also collaborative, meaning that all those steps uh, are going to be covered with a lot of communication that is ensured within the different channels. Uh, we have, of course, our native channel. We can, of course, also communicate through the different mailboxes, but also we communicate on the uh, Microsoft team, for example, connector. So this is a native one that we can use to always notify and communicate between all the different stakeholders so everybody is aware and knows where our project is standing, how things are moving, if we have any issues, et cetera, et cetera. All right. I think it's time actually to get into the application and get more in depth uh, into plans or extra. So I'm just going to switch into up. All right, so uh, let me actually introduce you here into uh, Planis for Orchestra. As you can see, we have uh, directly access to Planis for Orchestra from any web browser. It means that you just need the address link here, the URL, and just the ID of the user, and you will be able to access to it. Okay, so uh, here, once we access and we log into the application, we get first into the home page or what we call the landing page. On the landing page, as you can see, we have multiple portlets here. Uh, this is basically uh, 
the kind of like a bird eye view of the user once he access to the application. He has all the relevant information, all the data is real time updated. And of course, he has the ability to directly drill down into the different objects. So just with one single click, and he can get into that specific object. The purpose here is really to have into one single and view uh, any change about his status, any issue, or for example, any uh, action that I need to do. Like for example, here I need to review a gate. I will be able to do that directly from my homepage, and this is going to be a lot of uh, efficiency. Uh, then going forward here, uh, I'm going to. First, cover what we call the portfolio and strategic level here of our portfolios, and then I will move into the project management part of it. So let's say that our user actually is going into the master portfolio here. We are within the placeware and company. We are more specifically talking about the IT master portfolio. This is where we have all the different initiatives and all the different projects running. So as you can see, we have a whole hierarchy uh, so we can see the breakdown actually of this master portfolio into two sub-levels. We have some internal IT initiatives, but also we have internals and partners uh, initiatives uh, within those different sub-levels that we can also call as strategic objectives of our master portfolio. We can see the breakdown into multiple programs. We can have as many levels and sub-levels as needed. There is no real limit. It's just about how do you guys group your projects. Basically, we do that by business value, but you can have other ways of grouping. It could be, for example, by location. It could be by type of technology, by type of uh, sub-industry. I mean, we have a lot of ways of grouping. So within those different programs, we will, of course, find out the different projects that would be attached with those programs. So from a portfolio analysis, here, uh, our uh, master user will be able to get into the dashboard and get some knowledge uh, either about the status uh, or about the budget overrun, etc. So all the comments that were made by the PMO will be available here. He can also see a clear roadmap where he can see the different uh, committees, steering committees, the different uh, pro portfolio, product reviews, etc., etc. All the, the key milestones uh, that would affect our portfolio are available here and we can see them very clearly. In addition to some KPIs as the current state or the forecast trend, we can have other metrics that would better explain those KPIs. Like for example, here we can see that there is an overall budget overrun of 582K. So it means that we probably have some issues on this portfolio. Let's get in depth in our analysis. We can see here the different sub-levels so uh, we have, as I said, two sub-levels. We can see their own current health and forecast trend indicators, but also we can see in more details the budget overrun. So for example, here we can see that the most part of this overrun, cost overrun, is coming from the internal IT initiatives. We have, of course, other widgets that can be uh, added, like, for example, risk registers, risk metrics, or for example, some OKR indicators here, we, we can see how we are doing, how we are performing to reduce, for example, the cost over the whole portfolio by 50%. This is one of the objectives that we have set for uh, the financial year of 2023. So this is just an example of a dashboard. Keep in mind that we can edit it, we can add new widgets uh, from our library. It's very complete, it covers 99% of, uh, of the need of our customers. And for the 1% of our customers who might, might not find the widgets uh, in the library, they can create that by their own directly within the tool. We have also the ability to save the different dashboards as templates so we can easily navigate from a dashboard to another, depending, of course, on your role. Let's now actually, for example, uh, drill down into uh, another level. Like, for example, we are going into the internal and partner initiative. So directly we can drill down from the dashboard into that level. And here we can access to the dashboard of the, that specific level internals and partners. Here we can see different information. We have actually metrics about the cost, metrics about the load, some graphs that can be added here, as you can see about the cost and load and uh, their annual consumption on, uh, in currency or in mandates. 
So moving forward through our analysis, we are going to focus on the digital CX uh, assets. This is where we have the most of the budget overrun. The other one is pretty good. We can see the current health is green. The forecast trend is pretty stable, so we should not expect any issues from that program, but the digital uh, CX uh, assets is having actually here some hard time. All right, so moving here through this um, program, we can see that we have its own dashboard, of course, but with different information. This is what I said, the library is very complete and it covers multiple needs. So we can see the prog uh, the project progress. We can see how our projects are, are doing the status by uh, the breakdown by status. Uh, and also we can see the roadmap. The roadmap is, the roadmap is very helpful because uh, it will help us uh, as an IT um, program. We have the whole picture. We can also see the dependencies between the different projects. And uh, we can see where currently my projects are standing. Uh, if they are actually late, if they are on track or not, we can also compare with the initial plan. So this will help us to see if there is any delay, what would be the impact of, of those delays, et cetera, et cetera. We have in addition to that, a reporting table here with all the different projects uh, that are displayed. We can see the project manager's names, their status, but also we can see the latest summary. This is the latest actually uh, report comment that was created by the project manager. And also we have other KPIs and metrics on the right as alerts, for example, that, uh, that can be popped. You can click on those and we can get more in depth and more, and we will be able to understand better the context. We have also the ability to export those dashboards, meaning that um, it's very simple individually to export, for example, a table or a grid into a mix, uh, to an Excel export or for example, an image or a graph into a, a, a PNG or a GPG uh, file. All right, so going through this uh, portfolio analysis, let's move a little bit into the content of our program. Here, we can access to the list of the projects. This is the different projects that are currently related to this digital CX asset. So as I said, this is an IT program. Here, we are going to... Uh, basically develop and uh, implement projects regarding, for example, in mobile app, some software maintenance, some uh, new actually digital projects like biometric authentication, virtual car development, a chatbot, being able to enable some training about cryptocurrency. I mean, yeah, this is like different type of, of projects that we have currently within this program. And uh, let's say that today we are sitting to review the new projects that we have in our pipeline. This is usually an exercise that organization struggle a lot with because um, you need really to have good metrics. You need to have the right criteria to be able to do your choice. So for that, Plainsor Orchestra actually help you with uh, uh, an analysis that is actually standardized and that also can be tailored to your own need. Well, let me explain that. So let's say that currently we are sitting together and we are going to review at the same time the projects that are currently running within the pro program, the ones that are already approved and the ones that are not yet approved. They are submitted regarding the approval status here. We can see submitted. They are not yet approved. So uh, such an analysis will help you to objectively actually first pair the different projects based on multiple criteria. So if you can see on the top here, we have a list of projects and we have different metrics. Like for example, here we can see the return on investment, the requested cost, the expected uh, need flow of load or of revenues, and also some other indicators, NPV, IRR, etc. <clears throat> we have also done project and uh, financial indicators as for example, the strategic alignment score. This is to show you how much is this project aligned with the strategy of this program. So we can set multiple questions and multiple choice of answers. And depending on the answer, we will get either a higher or a lower score. The higher it is, the more aligned with your strategic, uh, with your uh, strategy it is. 
Also, risk impact score also can be calculated, et cetera, et cetera. So all those criteria will help us actually to compare those different projects and being able to arbitrate and set at first a priority, meaning that, okay, regarding the criteria, this project is needed. This one is also needed, but I think that this project is going to be more prioritized because we expect better ROI. We maybe uh, use less cost, etc. We might have other indicators. So this is something that we need to prioritize among the other project. And to do that, you can use the bubble chart that you can see below. You can use up to three criteria: uh, one on the horizontal. Uh, one on the vertical and the one and the third is actually on the size of the bubble. So basically here on the horizontal axis, we can see the requested cost, requested load and other type of criteria. Vertical could be also the same size, etc. So for example, let's do some profitability analysis. The horizontal would be the requested cost, the vertical would be the expected revenues and the size of the bubble is, for example, the score. So we can see here objectively where <clears throat> my projects are located. And they will be able to do also and to perform some what if simulation. So when I click here on the projects that are currently submitted, I'm just simulating their impact on the bubble chart. This will help me, for example, to compare objectively between two projects as, for example, CWC2 and ETBC2 here. So I will be able to say, all right, uh, SWDBC2 is more important then the other project, because we expect less cost, we also expect maybe less revenues. But as you can see, it's uh, more ROI. So ROI is more important for this project. And as we use less cost, so probably we will make, put this as high priority. This is one of the analysis that can be done at, at, at the first. Going forward here, we can do the same also analysis regarding uh, financial plans to actually ensure that we have the founding and that we, that, that, that we have actually the money to approve those different projects. And also we have the ability to do some capacity planning um, analysis, meaning that here on those uh, different projects that are currently um, not yet approved, as you can see on the approval status, we can do some analysis like uh, first we do select the critical projects. Okay, those are the ones that are going to probably there is no arbitration, they are critical, they are mandatory, so we need to approve those. But here, by doing that, I can already see that I would have some bottlenecks for, uh, for example, October 2023. So uh, one of uh, the, actually, um, assets of the tool is that you are very flexible. It means that you have, for example, here, two options. You can either look for which resource are you going to have, some example, some hard time, here, basically, it's about developers and also designers. Or you can also say, oh, I'm not going to increase the capacity of my designers and developers. I'm going to keep it the same, but I am going to uh, actually start this project a little bit later. So I'm going to find out uh, the perfect time to be able to start it without impacting the current capacity of my uh, organization. So this is something that you will be able to do to switch actually the start and to look for a better timing. Okay. All right, so uh, once we went through this analysis and once we have decided which project are the most relevant, which one do, do we uh, have the founding for, and also which one do we have the right resources at, at the right time, we will be able to approve and to communicate that to the project managers. Let's now actually, uh, switch into some project management. We are going now into the project manager's shoes and we are going to uh, actually focus on one of the projects, like for example, ETBA1. <clears throat> Here by accessing into the project, we can get into directly the dashboard of the project where we can see a lot of information as for example, the split of the project life cycle into multiple phases and gates. We can see the current state trend, other metrics about cost and load, like for example, what's the budget and amount? What's the actual amount that is already consumed? What is the forecast? We can see about our schedule, if we are on time, if we are off track. So all the information is directly available at the uh, at the home at at the, at the dashboard. So here uh, it's very uh, relevant 
information which is coming from those different modules that you can see here, phasing gate, schedule, deliverables, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, based on those different modules, you will be able to do different things on your projects. Like for example, on the phasing gate, you will be able to do some governance management, meaning that within those different phases, uh, you have of course a checklist of deliverable that you can define. You can either import that from templates and you are going to review them during the milestone of uh, the phase review, which is a gate. And on those gates, you will be able to assign different gatekeepers. So basically, for example, during the development phase, your uh, resources are going to deliver. So they are going to actually check those different deliverables that are needed. And during the gate, so we are going here to start a new review, you will be able actually to invite your gatekeepers to give their opinion and to give their review based on the deliverable checklist and based on all the different information, like for example, documents, cost and load information, resources, reports that were generated, et cetera, et cetera. So here, for example, Brian will be invited to give his opinion. Like here, for example, he's going to say, yes, okay, I, I approve. I'm good to go with uh, the deployment. We are pretty safe for the development, so we are good to go with the next phase, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, as this is a collaborative tool, everything that you do can be shared on a conversational panel. And the purpose, as I said, is always to ensure communication. So other stakeholders, other team members will be able to mention back, they will be able to reply, and we can have a whole actually conversation here between the different users. All right, so once uh, you have all the different uh, gatekeepers reviews, you will be able to decide either you give a final go or a no go or put on hold, or you can go, for example, with caution, etc. So you can decide actually on which uh, gate review you want to give. And as I said here, as we just gave a go, we can see that the gate is in green, meaning that it was successfully passed and we can now move into the deployment phase, which is exactly the same. You will have deliverables that you need to deliver and you are going to get that reviewed, et cetera, et cetera. So this is basically the governance exercise. We can see also the whole checklist of deliverables that are needed regarding the whole project life cycle. We can see that split by phase. And when we go more in depth, we can talk about the Gantt and the schedule. This is basically to ensure visibility to your work plan. So you will be able to have, for example, this view where we can see the group of tasks, tasks, et cetera, either a fully graph or a task list, or we can also have a hybrid view where we combine both the task list and the Gantt graph. Uh, our Gantt is very, very easy to use, meaning that uh, it's very simple actually if I want to add new links, for example, of, or if there is, for example, any change on the duration of a task, I can directly do that from the Gantt, or I can just change the durations, the predecessor, successor, columns, etc., on the table. It's very also simple to compare with the baseline to see the impact of the delay of a task on the final delivery of our project. And of course, we have the ability to analyze the critical path in order to really see uh, if we do have any float, any margin or not. Here, basically, we don't. Uh, if, for example, I remove a link, let's say that uh, we have a link that is going to be uh, removed, we can see now that uh, we have a little bit more float. Oh, no, it's already uh, in progress. Okay. So we can see that, for example, this task is not on the critical path because basically uh, it is not linked. It still has some float, so there is no need to actually take care of this one. We need to really focus on all the ones that are currently in red. All right, so going further through this analysis, we have also the ability to have inter-project links, uh, meaning that if you have any dependencies with other uh, projects, like for example here, we can see that uh, our project is linked with other ones uh, based in Sacramento and San Francisco. They have go-lives and we need to really to be linked with those. So we can see all the different interdependencies between our projects and the other ones. The other ones are, of course, uh, handled by other people like here, for example, Steven. So uh, the project of Steven is getting delayed. The MS Go Live is getting delayed. I will be notified. I will be alerted about that. And I will be able to do the appropriate action from my side to be aligned with his schedule. All right, going forward here through board and uh, work management. So at 
any of those steps, either at uh, the schedule or at the board. Of course, we have the ability to do some resource allocation, meaning that we can directly do the allocation from the um, from the, 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 the Gantt. So this is something that you will be able to do by your own. Work management, it's basically about being able to break down any task into multiple um, into actually multiple work items. So if, if for example, we see this sprint, we can see here we have a list of user stories that need to be developed. Those are actually shown within the board and we can track actually the progress directly on the Kanban board here. So each time that my resources are working on, on, on some of those work items, I will be able to track that on the Kanban board. All right, so I'm just going to here uh, conclude with uh, some reporting, but just before that, let's say that our project manager actually needs to uh, create some risk items uh, that are uh, related with the deployment phase, okay? So here he needs to uh, create some risk items and he doesn't actually uh, know what type of risks he needs to create. He's not very inspired, he's not, he's, he's not inspired today. He He's maybe also junior, you know, junior project manager. He doesn't have such great experience with deployment projects. So here we are working uh, internally within Place for Orchestra on a new feature. Uh, it's not yet released. It's just I'm going to show you this. It's still in R&D process, but it's uh, related to artificial intelligence. This is just to show you also that Planisware is uh, is always on the top of the innovation. So for example, here, if you are not inspired, you just need to click here. and the tool is going to get some inspiration for you. This is not going to be chat GPT and all our uh, kind of like uh, open sourced data. This is going actually to look into uh, the system and look to similar projects where we have deployment phases and it's going to retrieve the similar risk items that could be impacting your project. So this is a list actually of risks that were identified by the tool automatically in relation with the deployment. So we can see data privacy, functionality errors, integration issues, accessibility. We can see also that it already has some probability impact that were calculated and the criticality is then of course here uh, shown. So you will be able actually to have your risk items already created, but also you will get the action plans attached with those already also created. So you have also action plans that are already there. You just need actually to contextualize to say, yes, this is something applicable to my project or no, basically no, we, we don't have any encryption. So we don't need to encrypt customer data. I'm just going to remove this, etc., etc. So this is just some insights about uh, the new features of coming. Let me here wrap it up with some reporting. So uh, basically the regular tasks of project manager is to do and to create nice reports. And for that, Plains for Orchestra is very helpful. In two clicks here, basically it's only one single click, I can create one new flash report. Flash report is instant, it's quick, and it shows you all the automatically calculated KPIs and metrics, like for example, the expected versus actual percentage complete. You can see the schedule, cost, load, uh, metrics, etc. But also here we can add some context and some uh, insights from the project manager like for example since the last review what happened i can set uh, like a whole summary of the minutes that we captured today during our project review meeting i can also add some highlights the issues that we encountered the next steps for our next review etc etc and i can get more in depth and comment for example those different automatically set uh, kpis about tasks schedule i can see the delay here we have 126 day of delay we have some cost information. We can see if we are getting above or below the, the budget. Same thing for the load consumption, et cetera, et cetera. And once we have complete our report, we will, be, we will be able to create it and to post it. Here we keep track of all the different reports that were generated. We can see the last, the last one that we just created here. And the purpose is really to see what happened uh, from a contextual side, like give me some context, give me some uh, text actually to better understand why did we move from a green line into a red line, etc. Everything is going to be uh, clear and you keep track of the whole history of the project since its initiation. For external users, you can also create reports like, for example, a PDF or a PowerPoint format. Uh, 
Uh, one of the examples would be uh, this one. So it's one pager PDF format where you re 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 retrieve all the major important information. So here we can see the uh, project name, project manager. We can see all the different indicators that are red. So we are not doing very good here. We can see the cost and means loads uh, charts. We can see the risk register that we have just created. The issues, the highlights, the next steps, all those information are captured with the comments, but also with the staging gate that we just passed. So all the information is going to be summarized into one single file, and you will be able to use this to share with your external users, and it only takes two clicks. I'm just going to finally show that at the program level and portfolio level. So this uh, means that you have a lot of efficiency regarding time uh, consumption. You don't need to go after each project manager within your portfolio or program and ask him for his report. You have everything available at only one single click. You get all the different flash reports, the latest flash reports that were generated by your program manager, and you will be able also to generate a list of project flash reports. So uh, this is going to take the latest flash report from each project within your program and actually generate a PDF or a PowerPoint fo format file that you can then share with your top management. So slide by slide, we can go through each of those projects and we can see all the major information that we want. All right, I'm going here to uh, actually handle that to uh, my colleague from I2E. So thanks for your attention for the demo and uh, it's all yours. Thank you, Valid. And thank you everyone for your time and patience during this insightful demo, uh, skillfully presented by Valid. So now as we are as we near the conclusion of this comprehensive session, I'm excited to share an insightful or you can say an inspiring case study that actually highlights the impact, the real world impact of this transfer orchestra tool. So before we delve into this case study, I would like to give you an uh, uh, kind of background about this case study. So the business case uh, that we are going to discuss today, uh, is, it is about a company that has set a target of, you know, generating 1 billion of revenue. Uh, so for that, to achieve that particular target, they have set some, uh, kind of uh, long-term strategic uh, initiatives. They want to expand into chemi uh, specialty chemicals. They want to uh, expand into CDMO services. And they also want to expand their uh, uh, their uh, projects, which were like kind of, uh, uh, which were into pesticides and uh, those, those in those areas. So to, uh, to expand those those initiatives, to get into those initiatives, they wanted to have a solution which can actually help them, you know, uh, to to uh, manage their projects from addition to uh, product launch. The one tool that they have actually uh, zeroed in on is the plans for orchestra because it was uh, a powerful tool and it can manage their projects from addition to project launch. It is just not a, a project man management tool. It is actually a comprehensive solution that aligns with their strategy. So here is here is it how it's worked for them. So the first thing that we had done for them is like for the life cycle management because they were having a predictive life cycle. I mean they have stages from uh, ideation to uh, product launch, and they have stages different stages from conceptualization. Uh, validation, development, registration. So to manage all those stages, they should have some sort of uh, stage gate model available for them so that they can have a visibility across uh, the entire project life cycle. And uh, they should also, you know, uh, the way uh, what is they explained, like at every set, they should be, uh, they should have that flexibility to to work on, see like what are the deliver deliverables for each stage, whether they are in place or not, and then they can move to the other stage, uh, to the next stage of the project. So we have customized the Sage and Gate workflow for them so that they have the entire visibility across the projects. And to kickstart the innovation in Plans Orchestra, we have got a module called uh, Ideation Module. So through this Ideation Module, they were able to capture, uh, screen their ideas and approve their ideas efficiently. 
So basically what we had done is we essentially digitized their entire uh, ideation uh, workshops, streamlining their entire process. And once the projects, ideas are actually converted to projects. And I mean, each of their project was unique in nature, but uh, I mean, all those projects, basic on the project type, they follow a particular project life cycle and they follow a particular project plan template. So we have customized project plan templates for various type of project they're having. So this actually saved a lot of time for them. And uh, this also ensures that all the uh, major project milestones and uh, are, are captured and tracked properly. The other important thing that we had done for them is, I mean, they were actually using a pro, a SAP for managing their project financials. So we have customized brands for orchestra to integrate seamlessly with their SAP system and bring in their costs from different, uh, you know, this, this SAP system within brands orchestra to have, to give them the visibility across the financials as well. Uh, I mean, as, Walid has just shown us like we have got a number of reports which are already available at different levels in the uh, in plans orchestra. But this customer, particular customer, uh, they have an, an analytics department which was collating data from different data sources. I mean, all the functions have different uh, you know applications which they were using. So they also needed to uh, export the pro project data from plans orchestra and build some report using Power BI. So we have created those pipelines for them so that this data can be exported to their uh, data lake. And from there, they were using Power BI to generate some sort of you know visuals that was helping in them in their decision making and all. So I mean, this is how we have actually helped them. And uh, I mean, the the transformation that they have achieved by implementing plans for orchestra has been remarkable to them. I mean, the first benefit that they've got is like all the projects have been centralized and available under one roof so that you know, all the stakeholders can can see the project status and information in real time. They do not need to you know check with other uh, uh, project managers and asking for the status. Now they can come to this application and at, at any point of time, they can see the latest updates happening around those projects. And uh, I mean, as we said, like we have also streamlined the the their uh, project life cycle by enabling the Sage and Gate models as well. So, I mean, this was very important because it gives them the flexibility where we, they can see like what, how their projects are doing in terms of, I mean, where they are in terms of their stages. And this also ensures that, you know, the governance of projects have been maintained properly or done properly. And as we discussed about the, the, uh, project plan templates, because now they do not have to start really from the scratch. We already, they already have the project plan templates available with them so that they can use them. So it actually saves a lot of time for them, right? I mean, they do not have to build everything from scratch. So they can use this and adapt it to their uh, projects as per the project scale and complexity. And as we have those uh, integrations with SAP and uh, or uh, Power BI, uh, Power BI. So they were able to, you know, uh, uh, they can have the holistic overview of the project financials and the project perform performance. So all these benefits that they were, you know, all these factors which they have, uh, we have in place now, they were all contributing to their business goal of, you know, achieving 1 billion revenue for, for, for their organization. So, I mean, in conclusion, I mean, this demonstrates like how this powerful project management tool, which is Plans for Orchestra, can can help them in, you know, uh, in the strategic transformations within the organizations. So, I mean, that was a very small case study and we have actually were the uh, implementation partners along with uh, the Plansware. So we have implemented Plansware Orchestra for this customer. And they're actually reaping a lot of benefits. So with this, I mean, um, uh, we are open to any questions that you may have regarding this case study or, I mean, the entire uh, press orchestra application as a whole. All right. Thank you so much, Himanshu. So, yes, everyone, thank you so much for your patience. We are now open for a question and answer. So, if you have any questions, please feel free to share those questions with us either in the chat box or in the Q&A box.
we have about five minutes left. So I ran a poll where I, you know, I asked if you would be interested uh, in having a separate call with us to know more about Planisware Orchestra, to which a lot of you have replied positively. And uh, we have the results and uh, our team will be contacting you separately so that we can have a separate call where you can bring in a larger audience and we will show you all the capabilities of Planisphere Orchestra and probably answer all the questions that you may have related to your uh, industry, your company or any specific requirement. We also had a question in the poll that asked you uh, about the, the project management tools that you use in your organization. A lot of you have selected Microsoft Project of course, Microsoft Project is, is a very good tool, but you at the same time, you've also opted for the option where we had asked you if you want to know more about Planisphere Orchestra and how it is better than Microsoft Project in a few aspects. So for that too, we've got a lot of positive responses. And like I said, we will contact you after the event and we can set up some time and continue the discussion. Yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to send it to us, send them to us in the chat or in the Q&A box. We have another two minutes left. If, if we don't have any questions by then, we, we will wrap up the session and uh, we will keep in touch. We have all the answers from the polls. We have your email addresses. Thank you so much for your patience once again. Uh, the recording of this uh, session will be available on our website and uh, the people who have missed this will also be getting the email from us uh, with the recording link and for the people who have attended it you will still get the recording link so if you want to revisit the tool you definitely can watch the video and if you have any questions uh, after this event you can reach out to us directly on the email address that you see here, which is solutions at the rate i2econsulting.com. Okay. Um, well, since we don't have any questions, I think we can uh, wrap it up. Yeah, thank you so much everyone for your time. Thank you so much, Walid, and thank you, Himanchu, for an amazing session. Thank you. Thank you, Vivek. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Walid. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Bye bye. 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 Take care. Bye bye.